RMJ Movie Reviews back again with uh, narrowing down the completion of my Halloween franchise movie reviews of 1981's Halloween 2. Produced, written by Deborah Hill and John Carpenter, directed by Rick Rosenthal. Wow. Halloween 2. Uh, and this is the collector's edition uh, from Shout Factory that came out, or Screen Factory that came out a couple years ago. It's got the theatrical version and the TV version. Uh, I saw the TV version way, 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 way back when, before uh, the internet was even around. I believe I saw the TV cut back in, I believe it was 1989 or 1990. I know I was about in second or third grade when I saw the TV cut, because my mother was nice enough to set the record button. I recorded it off the Channel 5 uh, late night Friday movie. <laughs> But anyway, I recorded it over a long time ago. I wish I would have kept it. But anyway, I got it on this version. So anyway, Halloween 2. Um, this is a movie, as we know, I, I saw Halloween 2 way back in the day. And uh, I always liked it. Um, I never particularly liked it more than the original. And even still now, upon re-watching it multiple times, uh, I, I don't think it's a better film than the, the original. Um, I think like Lance Quest said, uh, the actor who plays Jimmy in the film, it kind of gives you the same sort of kick as the original, um, maybe slightly differently, and I'll explain that in a minute. But um, I, I still think that the film very much holds up. Um, after seeing Halloween 218 that was just released, I, I do not think that uh, Halloween 218 is a, is a better movie than this, and I don't think that it's a funner movie than this. Um, uh, I'll explain my negatives and positives with Halloween 2, but um, let's get right into the positives. Uh, number one, the positive is they brought over a lot of the team from Halloween 1, so Dean Cundy is back. Uh, Alan Howarth actually does the music, but it was but it was written by John Carpenter, so he just laid over a more synth, uh, beefed up soundtrack version of the original film. And I think uh, I've heard some fans who like it and some like who like the original better. I think it just works for this film because this is basically this is Halloween one is a suspense driven thriller heavy on atmosphere and and simplistic uh just implied doom right this uh is literal like doom and and really just uh a slasher version of halloween halloween the first one is not a slasher film like i said but this is a through and through body count slasher picture with a lot of the atmospheric and uh, sinister vibe and some of the um, artistic technical aspects of Halloween 1. That's what Halloween 2 is. Um, the cinematography, spot on. The lighting in this movie, although the first one took more of like blues and cold, this one kind of shifts and uses more warm colors, but still the cinematography and the lighting in a lot of these shots, it, it's just, it's beautifully, 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 beautifully lit. Um, in particular, uh, one of the scenes that never stood out to me before was the scene where Dr. Loomis and um, Deputy Hunt are talking in front of the Myers house. Lo oh, just lit. You can almost see the leaves fluttering off uh, Dr. Loomis and Deputy Hunt's face, uh, just the way this movie is lit. And like I said, the, the score for this is... Uh, just very sinister sounding and very uh, organ synthy sound of, of the eighties. I, I like it. I think it fits. I don't think it sounds dated at all. Some people think it does. I don't think it. I don't think it does. And John um, Carpenter uh, really brings back a lot of those cues from the first one. You know, in the first one it was, but this one it kind of it, it, it's it's a heightened keyboard esque version. Um, a lot of the POV shots, although uh, the tracking POV shot from the first one is, is extended throughout the entire picture. It wasn't throughout the entire picture of the first one. It was mostly in that first shot uh, in the opening murder. But this one here is used throughout the picture. Maybe it might be used a little bit too much, but still it's keeping in that stylistic choice of the first film. Very fantastic. Um... I like, too, that we got a lot of tracking shots. For example, you have the scene in the original one where Myers gets out of the uh, the stolen car from the um, that Doom Loomis and the nurse had, and the camera kind of follows his feet and follows him as he watches Annie go into the house. This uh, has extended sort of shots in it like that. And um, 
sometimes I think it works. <clears throat> sometimes I don't think it works. Uh, in particular, two scenes I don't think it works is where um, Michael Myers steals the, the knife from the old woman's house and walks over to kill the girl next door. I, I just don't think it was particularly... It shouldn't... I don't think that shot should have been there like that. It should have been more implied, like, where is he? Where is he? And that's the biggest issue with this film is that you see a little bit too much of Michael Myers and you don't feel him enough. He, his presence is still, he still very much has the force of na nature feel of the original film and you feel him everywhere. But I, I, I kind of feel that um, they show a little bit too much of him and I think it takes away his mystique. He gets a little bit more robotic in here. Um, he's still very boogeyman-ish, but not like in the first film where you just kind of, you see him less and you kind of see him in pieces and you kind of really do feel like, I mean, he could be up under my damn couch, even though my couch has this much space underneath it. You, he's so his presence is so, you just feel he could be there, you know. And I think this movie loses a little bit of that by showing so much of him. Full body shots with brightly lit hallways. Um, the hospital setting to me works, um, although uh, have been a person who's a hospital worker and worked in hospitals during nights. Um, hospitals are never quite this isolated there are parts of the hospital particularly probably parts that are closed down that are just isolated but you know whatever it's a horror movie and also there's a cut scene where michael myers actually shuts off the power so um like i said the sinister atmosphere john carpenter's score the lighting uh a lot of the the dolly tracking shots and the the, the not just the dolly but the the um um you, you know uh steady cam shots Excellent stuff. It's all great. Of course, Donald Pleasant. Donald Pleasant carries this movie, and I think in retrospect now, I'm, I'm, I can kind of see where movies like H two O Resurrection, all the Resurrection was horrible on its own. But I, I think without Donald Pleasant, and I know Donald Pleasant has been dead since nineteen ninety five. You know, rest in peace. Um, I think without him, it, I think that that's really you need both of them. You need Pleasance and you need Laurie. And I think that's kind of really a big piece of the heart that's missing in this Halloween 218. I mean, you know, the man's been dead for years, so, you know, but I'm just saying. Uh, he carries this movie fantastic because um, it's really him. It's too bad Charles Cypress is Sheriff Brackett opts out early because it would have been nice if he had stayed in the whole picture. But uh, Nick Nolte from 48 Hours steps in to take his place. That's, that's not really Nick Nolte. But he looks like Nick Nolte in 48 Hours when run. Deputy Hunt, which is a strong presence. And I, I like all the police officer characters. Those are very good. And I love the hysteria. That it's a continuation of Halloween 1. But you feel like the hysteria that has broken loose in the town. And it's just like, it's chaos everywhere. I mean... You know, Loomis is losing it because he knows for sure he's killed three kids and this guy is still on the loose and they get Ben Tramer killed, who Lori liked. You know, it's just like, it's mass hysteria. You know, Donald, uh, Dr. Loomis should have went to jail for that, but you know, whatever, that the kid gets killed, they gotta go about their business. But it's mass hysteria. I love that they go back to the old Myers house and there's still a creepy, some creepy, poetic dialogue that Donald Pleasance gives about inhuman, uh, I, I can't remember, extraordinary patience or whatever the line is, he says. But uh, again, delivered with poetry, fantastic. Um... Now, uh, we got to go on to the bad. <sighs> Unfortunately, uh, the positives to me outweigh the negatives of this picture, but there are some negatives. And I will say, um, this movie meanders. It, it really, um, in knowing the behind the scenes that John Carpenter was coerced uh, legally into making this film, because I guess he reneged on an agreement with Urban Yablons, uh, suppo allegedly, supposedly, only in interviews I've seen, I guess that's what happened. Um, you can really feel the cash cow, just I don't care attitude about it. The twist with Lori being uh, Michael Myers' sister, although I, I do believe that it works within Halloween 2. I don't think it really works for Halloween 1. I can look at them as a continuation as one story, but I don't believe that subplot. I believe one movie is random, and I believe in this movie they're connected. So I can separate the two although they are kind of one stepchild story, if you look at it like that. <clears throat> but um, 
it, it does just feel kind of like it meanders a lot of the time. I can really see John Carpenter was reaching. He really didn't want to make this thing. And, and the movie kind of just really spins its wheels, you know, and it drags a tad bit. Because really, a lot of this movie is just stalking. Stalking. It does continue that thread of the first film, just a continued stalking, and I do like that. Um, Jamie Lee Curtis's character is just not proactive, and, and Jamie Lee Curtis is a, is a great actress, and it's just she's she's so weak in this film. She ended the first film with so much strength, and she's weak here and whimpering and limping and just saying lines where she just goes, "Okay, okay." Um, the, some of the side characters, the new characters in this, and I love Leo Rossi. But Bud is a grade A a hole, man. He's just not a likable guy. I, I love Leo Rossi because he's great. He's the man. He's a great character actor. But the character of Bud, all of them are, are just unlikable people. Uh, Jimmy's okay, but he's he's weird, and you don't know why he's weird. And I do like the one nurse chick that gets a syringe to her temple. She she's actually very sweet. Um, but they're just all unlikable throwaway characters. I believe Roger Ebert mentioned that in his characters. They're just lambs to the slaughter. And not trying to say that uh, Annie and uh, um, uh, Linda were like the greatest of characters, but they just, they felt like teenage girls. They felt like real characters. And I didn't particularly find them annoying. I mean, they just acted like teenage girls. But uh, these characters here are just very obnoxious, minus uh, the, the, the deputy characters, which I, I like them. And, of course, the nurse from part one. Um, and there's just, there's just there's goofy things in it. Like, in particular, I think my... I do agree with the assessment that with the long shots of Myers being too robotic, I kind of... They should have sped it up a little bit. He, he was too robotic, but nobody cared. They were making this movie for the money. Um... The thing with Jimmy slipping on the blood, I, you know, even though I work in a hospital, I, I, I don't really quite, I, I mean, I've seen my share of blood in real life come out of patients' arms, but I'm not really quite sure that much blood comes out of the human body. It's, it's, it's a stupid scene. Although I love the visual and the way it looks, with, that was maybe more the idea behind it was just a creepy visual with this very well shot. Jimmy coming into the car and going, I think, I, and then he falls on the horn. I, it's stupid. I don't know who, whether he died, it's just left open. I don't understand that scene. I, I do not logically get that scene. I don't understand it. It's dumb to me. Um, you know, the thing with Jamie Lee Curtis when she falls out the car, and I understand those were tropes of the time where Dr. Loomis and help, help, help me. I hate that scene. Jimmy passing out in the car and that, that whimpering help, and then she screams. I hate those scenes. I really do. I just hate, I've always hated those scenes. There's random little things, the, the kid with the razor blade in his mouth, although a nice sinister touch, I don't understand it. I do not understand it. I don't understand why it's there. Just, I guess to me, it was just to add gruesome, sinister imagery to Halloween to just kind of expand. Because this movie, this film is much more sinister, making the, the Halloween, the, the holiday of Halloween into something sinister because they bring up the idea of Sam Hain in this movie. So that is a cool aspect, but I don't even know why that scene was there. I, I just don't. I, I, I don't get it. Um... There, there's other things in the story and, and just I think the plotting the plotting of just like the movie feels like it doesn't do anything with Laurie there's little unlikable characters the stupid little thing with the blood and Jimmy passing out and, and it kind of just feels like it has no direction um it, and you know how it feels to me um but you know, th those are the negatives that I that I feel about the film. But uh, ultimately, ultimately, I think the artistry in in the lighting and the way a lot of the the scenes are shot because you know it really takes advantage of um, you know th which is typical for Carpenter and Halloween the Halloween series is you know the, you know uh, foreground background shots. There's multiple shots like that in the movie where Myers is here and there's characters here or. You know, there's characters here, and Myers might be in that window. I love those shots. That that just there's a really cool shot where um, the one nurse who gets the the scalpel to the back. Um, I think it's a scene where she looks at the monitor. Myers walks into the room. It pans back to the monitor. It shows her walk into the room. I that's 
I love that. that. I think that's a creepy moment. And there's creepy things. This, this movie is creepy. I don't think it's as creepy and scary as the first film because you can't beat that ending montage with the breathing over it. Where you just can't beat that. That's just a chilling scene. But I, I still think that this film does contain a very creepy, unsettling, uncomfortable mood to it. Um, something I think the new film does not have. So, uh, um, you know, those are my thoughts on, on Halloween 4. Um, you know, him getting his eyes shot out and him doing the swinging. I know, I know that's debatable. A lot of hardcore Halloween 1 fans hate that. I'm here nor there. By that point in the movie, there's already been a lot of stupid things and a lot of illogical things, so I just didn't think it made it any worse than, you know, the slipping on the blood and Jimmy passing out on the horn, which I I just thought those were the two dumbest things in the movie to me. Um, but still, cash grab, uh, no heart put into it. Um, but... It's it's still a worthy follow up. There's enough artistry in here to to override the negatives of the film. So um, you know that's my opinion of Halloween 2 1981. It's it's better than Halloween 2 18 in my opinion. Thumbs up the video, subscribe to the channel, share the video, and don't forget to leave comments down below about Halloween 2 and um, you know any gossip you know about uh, how John Carpenter. If John Carpenter has uh, said anything else about how he was legally wrangled into making this film recently or anything, probably not. But, um, all right, RMJ Movie Reviews, I'll see you soon back with spoilers for Halloween 218. I'll see you soon.